unforgettable and the curtain call. Hideki Matsui had quite the arrival in his Yankee Stadium debut. His last game there in pinstripes, that was pretty good too, when he locked up World Series MVP honors with six RBI in game six of the 2009 Fall Classic. We're back as Yankees on Yes, Welcome to Opening Day continues. Matsui's Grand Slam was one of the first big moments during the Yes era. For some recollections on those early years and a look towards the season ahead for the Yankees, we now go to a discussion led by our Michael Kay. Well, thanks a lot. I am here with three friends and three colleagues, and we are all here at the beginning of the Yes Network. It's amazing that this is the 20th anniversary of Yes, and I'm with David Cohn, Paul O'Neill, and Ken Singleton. Ken, we'll start with you. What were your thoughts when the network started? Well, uh, you know, it was sort of like uh, coming out of nowhere because it only took like four months to put it all together. But I will say this, our, our boss, John Filippelli, did a magnificent job just getting yes on the air in such a short period of time and uh, acquiring the talent, which includes you, of course, and uh, to get it done. And uh, it's amazing that uh, after 20 years, uh, it, it went fast for me. I don't know about you guys, but uh, it, it went very quickly. Of course, uh, yes, is the probably the most successful regional sports network going and everybody tries to be like us so that we must be doing something right. Now, now, Kenny mentioned, Paul, how Flip put the talent together. And I got to tell you, in all the years I covered you as a player, I never thought that you would translate and be a broadcaster. Were you surprised when he asked you? You know, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was just coming off of retirement, 2001. And I remember being in Cincinnati and uh, Flip calling me and saying, hey, I'm interested in you doing this. And it kind of got the you know, the wheels turning as far as what am I going to do next? And then um, I remember going to Stanford, was supposed to uh, kind of talk to Flip about things. And the day I went in, he actually put me behind, put me behind the desk. I didn't know what light to look at. I didn't know what camera to look at, but uh, threw me right into the fire. And, you know, as I did the studio things, I, then I started mixing in games and I find myself uh, much more comfortable with the stadium doing the games, but uh, I agree with Kenny. I, I just cannot believe that it's been 21 years. Now, David, of all the players that I covered, I always thought, wow, if he wanted to do this, he could be a broadcaster because you just had that way and you actually like the media. How did it come about for you? It was the same thing. You know, Tip, You know, John Filippelli has got a great eye for talent. He, he knows how to cultivate that talent. And, you know, one of my earliest memories was going up to, like Paulie said, to, to Stanford, to the new studios, which were then the new studios back then. And Paul and I were laying out sort of a miniature golf range. We had a we had a putter. We were chipping up there, hitting, banging them off the windows. There was nobody up there. I mean, it was we had the whole place to ourselves, and so it was pretty remarkable. Fred Hickman was there at the time on the desk. So, you know, my my first uh, experience were in the studio, and I I'm similar to to Paul in that regard. That I, I had no clue about this business. I mean, I, I, Red Barber, the great. Hall of Fame legendary announcer used to say, uh, no jocks up here, please. Only the professionals. And they, I think I understand what he was saying there because Paul and I were pretty clueless at first. Well, the thing that I remember the most is our first broadcast, as I mentioned, was a spring training game. And, the, and I had never really done the lead guy. I was pretty much, you know, the sideline reporter uh, at MSG. And then I did radio with John. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm the lead guy. And I just remember the night before on March 17th, John Filippelli had, had me on the phone for two and a half hours and told me everything that I had to say on the open. I mean, everything. And it just kept going on and on. It was a laundry list of things to say. And I, they, there was no teleprompter. And if you look at it now, um, I, I did get it out. I somehow made it work. And I, I just remember I was so, so nervous. But another thing that you should see when you, when you look at a clip of that, I look about 40 years younger. And I always tell Flip that's flip time right there. Because 20 years, that's that's going to do it. But uh, it's been, I, I agree with all of you. It doesn't seem like 20 years at all. But 